Tonight on Joy News Prime, government is contemplating a tightening of the restrictions to check the spread of COVID-19 as it emerges. The number of severe cases being recorded in the latest wave has increased significantly. The possibility of a lockdown or introducing some more restrictions at some point in time. Yes, there is that possibility. And if this trend continues, that is where we are heading. Meanwhile, all the 16 regions of Ghana now have active cases of COVID-19 as the case, active cases now reach 3,613 with 372 deaths. Though observance of the COVID-19 protocols is said to have improved in the last few days, there are still many who refuse to comply. Obviously, the non uh, adherence to the protocol is a major, major challenge. I'm sure when uh, we've not done assessment, but we're going to do start one this week. Uh, ever since people started seeing the surge, I can see the mask wearing is, is improving. And that's right. Uh, we hope it continues like that. In business, three Ghanaian travellers denied entry into Amsterdam as KLM introduces this double test obligation for passengers. So four, four hours before boarding the aircraft, you have to do your antigen test, and that is now possible. Mm. We had uh, Sunday our first flight with the new rules and regulations, and we were able to carry on 160 passengers, and we only refused three passengers because of no COVID, of course, no, uh, no antigen test. In other news, hundreds have been filing past the coughing of former President Rawlings, who has been laid in state at the Accra International Conference Centre ahead of his burial on Wednesday. I think that um, the nation will remember him as someone who was so dearly loved, especially by the ordinary man who saw in him someone who really spoke for the ordinary person. My name is Israel and Johnny Prime is coming to you live from our final of our studios at Coco Mlimli here in Accra on your digital terrestrial TV because we're free to air and also on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. This is the home of independent, fearless, credible and impactful journalism. Stay tuned. In. Government is contemplating a tightening of restrictions to prevent the further spread of coronavirus as it emerges Ghana is dealing with a more serious strain of the virus. The Ghana Health Service in the last few hours has added to the number of COVID-19 cases after 1,341 new cases were reported January 21 and 22. The Director General, Dr. Patrick Abwaje, addressed the a news conference at the Ministry of Information. But there's a tweet that was posted uh, just about that, and it indicated that there were 3,525 active cases and 695 new cases reported January 21, 2021. Now, in the last few hours, the Ghana Health Service COVID-19 dashboard has been updated with the cases reported January 22. It indicates 646 new cases were reported, taking the active cases to 3,613. It brings the total number of confirmed cases to 62,135. There are 372 deaths. Uh, reported for January 22, 2021. So this is the very latest on the website of the Ghana Health Service. Now, Dr. Patrick Kumawaji explains that virus wreaking havoc in the latest wave of the pandemic is causing more severe ailments. This current surge, there's the number of people who are sick, the proportion of people who are fallen sick is significantly high. It's about 32 compared to 21% earlier. And so this is, um, but I'm sure there are still people who because of the way um, things are going are not reporting and they may not have symptoms. But for what we have about 32% compared to the previous one, even if you use the same system we're using, the number of people who are fallen sick here are much higher than before. So in January alone, we have confirmed 640 um, January 21st, 22nd, alone we have confirmed 646 
new cases from 17 districts and eight regions. The cases are going up. The people who are falling sick, critical and severe, are also going up. And these are mainly in greater Accra. He says the health service is invoking the full complement of its earlier case management regime to stem the spread of the virus. Increase the number of tests conducted by the lab has also, because of the response, definitely we need to continue doing the more tests, identify most positive and look at isolating them. Obviously, the non-adherence uh, to the protocol is a major, major challenge. I'm sure when uh, we've not done assessment, but we're going to do start one this week, uh, ever since people started seeing the surge, I can see the mask wearing is, is improving. We're going to get our public health labs to run 24 hours. We are opening a new one at uh, Guy East, I'm sure, before the end of the week. It will be operational so that more people can be tested. We are also encouraging that if you have a reason to test, even for those who self-elect to go and test, because you feel you are exposed, or because you feel like contact to somebody or whatever, you don't feel unwell, once you have that mind, you need to self-quarantine yourself until you see your results. And that is part of an important protecting your own family and everybody else. So it's very important that once you decide you have a reason to test, you self-isolate until your results come in. To decrease community spread, we are also getting additional uh, um, centers and must remain uh, in high quality. In fact, as we speak today, there's a team out there visiting the lab to check the quality and standard of testing not just the quality of testing, but also the linkages to the system, et cetera, to ensure that we are able to respond as a country quickly. We want to do some cell prevalence to see what is happening in the community, which we've started already. And of course, we ex expand our collaboration with the GES on education and prioritize um, communication, especially our engagement with the press to ensure that we are continue to pull the information and also we hope that you also help us provide appropriate information to people to adhere to the protocols. What the protocol seeks to do is to see how we modify so that we can also destroy the strength. So we need self-discipline and we need all of us to also help us enforce the change that we need so that we can avoid the spread of this deadly virus. Thank you very much. Now, even as the health service steps up its enhanced contact tracing and reinstitutes mandatory quarantines, Minister of Information designates Kojo Pongkrumah says government is also considering the reintroduction of new restrictions. We have a limited number of beds and ICU facilities for severe and critical. So it's very important that we ensure that the positive numbers go down. Because if this trend continues, as His Excellency the President mentioned, um, we will be overwhelmed if this trend continues. Uh, is there the possibility of a lockdown or introducing some more restrictions at some point in time? Yes, there is that possibility. And if this trend continues, that is where we are heading. I want to be very clear about that one. Yes, there's the possibility of some more restrictions being introduced. But especially as this trend is going, if it continues, then that is exactly where we are heading. We are being reminded that we all need to do the things that we were doing in the beginning that would ensure that this third rise, we can quickly curb it. Because the dynamics of this third rise appear to be a bit different from the first two that we had, including the number of people who are falling sick, severe and critical, as we discussed. So especially if these numbers keep going, average daily, new cases of 200, if it keeps rising to 210, 250, then in five days you are hitting about uh, 1,000 plus. If it keeps going the way it is going, uh, I think as the president himself articulated, then we are heading for some more restrictions. And if it means reviewing uh, some of the legal instruments, um, yes, that is where we will be heading. Now, the Ghana Health Service says there's been an improvement with the wearing of face masks and adherence to the other preventive protocols in recent days, even though there are still many who disregard the protocols. Join News' Upper West correspondent Rafiq Salam, for instance, reports very few people at the lowest station in the Wa Central Business District wear masks. 
He says commercial transport drivers, hawkers, tricycle operators are simply not adhering to the preventive protocols despite the increase in cases in recent weeks. This is what I observed after spending a couple of hours at the central business district of the one municipality, an impoverished and badly overcrowded market in Loro Station located at the heart of the town. President Akufa Adu gave a fiat asking citizens of the country to adhere to safety health protocols in order to help contain spreading figures of new cases of the deadly COVID-19 disease. After two hours of my interaction with passengers, hawkers, retailers, tricycle operators, commercial bus drivers, there have not been any scintilla of sign showing that they are ready to adhere to these safety health protocols. It's chaotic and nothing seems to work regarding the social distancing rules and the wearing of face masks right here in this market. The people are disregarding them with laconic bravery. Where's more, some ignorantly and arrogantly poo poo the existence of a disease that has claimed the lives of four persons, infected 161 persons, with 38 of them being active and one in critical condition in the region. You know, it's against the law for you to be in a public place without wearing those masks. No, that's Ghana. It's not there in Ghana. It's against the law to be in a public place without wearing those masks. No, the people wearing wear those masks. They know the corona. We don't know the corona. What is the meaning of corona? We people know. What disease are you referring to? What one gets small fever, you call it corona. Okay. Tendana Federal Port Effusions with this tricky explanation of why they are unmasked. My work is to start to call people to join the buses. How do I do it when I'm wearing those masks? Even the people who are expected to enforce the laws here are the very people flouting them with impunity. Mohamed Saka works here as a guard for the Ghana Private Road Transport Union, GPRTU. Why are you not wearing those masks? Somebody who is supposed to put law and order here. That's what I'm saying. I was having one, but it has, it, it's dirty. I didn't wash it. I wanted to come and buy one again. So, here is the market. You can buy one, but you're uh, not wearing it. I am going to buy one straight away. Now that you are the one who is supposed to be the law enforcer here and you are not wearing what do you want others to do? Okay. Uh, I, I didn't try. So next now, always try to cover it. Throughout our rounds at the lorry park, we spotted only one Veronica bucket kept for washing of hands, probably for the entire Loro station, which is about the size of three football fields. I bumped into these two young men riding a motorbike and they gave their names as Isifok Perihi and Kendepa. Though they have no smacks, they kept them beneath the seat of their motorbike. So when are you going to wear it? Now, now, open my motor and wear it now. Okay, open it and wear it now. Senior Industrial Relations Officer of the Upper West Branch of the GPRTU, Alayu Nu Mahama, expressed worry over the non compliance of drivers and passengers to safety health protocols, warning that they will soon come up with punitive measures for persons who flout the rules. They need sensitization. So that is what we are prepared to do. And even as I'm talking now, we are calling an emergency meeting to get all the drivers informed that any driver who fails within the region to wear nose masks before embarking on any trip, we are going to set up a, a, a regional task force to monitor them. If you get any driver, we will sanction him. The Upper West Police Command says they are also busy to ensuring that the present directive works. However, they haven't been successful to a large extent because they have been outsmarted by the people. Men are in town by their patrolling. So and they, have patrol, they haven't made an arrest? No, not an arrest yet. But I will say that, uh, you see, one modus that the people are using is that you see police, the moment they see the police, they have to remove the, the nose mask quickly and, and where, either from their pockets or from their handbags. So we are saying that if, 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 if heaven doesn't be on your, on your, on your this side, before that you forget and police arrest you.
make sure that we be prosecuted. Otherwise, you pay the fine as, as I mentioned, six thousand. So you think that the people are playing hide and seek with the police? Exactly, but they can run, but they can hide. We will make sure that he who we arrested will be prosecuted. Acting Upper West Region's Deputy Director of Health Services in charge of public health, Dr. Richard Wudasemi conceded that despite the deadly nature of the disease, there are several people who still doesn't believe the disease exists. He said the best approach to changing that perception is through education and sensitization. Everybody must make it a point to preach about the preventive measures to whoever they come into contact with. If we make it a, a habit that for every day we will convert one person, you can imagine the rippling effect of, of, of that exercise. So let us all go out and make sure that you, 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 you preach to somebody who, preach, who also preach to another person. Let's spread the information. The rules and regulations are strict and clear. It is an offense to refuse to wear face marks in public. The punishment is a fine of 6,000 to 12,000 Ghana cities. Failure to pay the fine, the person is liable for imprisonment of five to 10 years. However, the people are not taking it seriously because all habits die hard. Reporting for J News, Rafik Salam. Wow. <laughs> Meanwhile, there is growing resentment among caregivers at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital over the management of COVID-19 cases at the facility. Eight confirmed cases have been recorded at the Child Health Directorate in the last few weeks, with the caregivers accusing management of putting their lives at risk. As suspected, coronavirus cases are managed alongside regular patients. Oye Ming Toya has more in the following report. Doctors and nurses at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital's Child Health Directory say there is no concerted effort by management to either test staff who come into contact with COVID-19 cases or close down wars for fumigation. We have been told that we cannot refuse care to anybody. So I think our facilities are doing their best not to return anybody who walks into the facility being ill and by so doing they are also increasing the exposure rates of every other person around it's been almost a week now but nobody has been called or contacted about testing the staff nor the relatives a lot of us are embittered by it we keep complaining we keep passing comments but i mean we can only talk in the background if there is anything that can be done, it is about management helping us out. A nurse who spoke on condition of anonymity says the over 400 caregivers are compelled to work without the right protective gear. She says the development puts the immediate families and that of the public at risk. There has been a clear line in that we should have frontline health workers who have been trained specifically for the management of COVID-19. But as a stance, it looks like every health worker is capable of managing COVID-19 at any little space on the ward, which is not supposed to be so. It exposes both the patient, the health workers, as well as the relatives who come around these patients. And it makes managing COVID-19 quite difficult because we know that COVID-19 should be managed, one, in an isolation, two, by trained professionals, and three, with specific PPEs. And all these three things are being lagged. We initially had suspected and getting results was a problem. Finally, when they became confirmed, we had to manage them on the ward. Because as we have been told, there is currently no trained personnel and no specific place to keep those patients. So they were being managed on the ward. When they, in the first place, we don't even have social distancing on the ward because the wards are full. We had to manage these patients side by side with the average normal sick patients. According to her, Caregivers are appalled by the failure of management of the hospital to close down affected wards for fumigation. Ideally, the ward should have even been closed down by now. Once we got to know that there was a patient who had been on the ward and the exposure was to virtually every nurse and doctor. Because for three weeks, every nurse would have had contact with the patient so that these nurses could have been given an isolation plan at home with prophylaxis. And then if possible, each nurse should be tested 
And then based on the test, we would know who can return to work and who needs to stay home. Since we've had an increasing number of eight in just two weeks, the probability that we may record more in no time was possible and so we should be prepared for it. It's quite traumatizing and scary. Management of Konfanochi Teaching Hospital has expressed concerns over the issues raised and promised to respond at appropriate time. From Kumasi, for Joy News, I am Interia reporting. You're watching Joy News from We're taking a break, but still ahead in the bulletin, the Ghana Medical Association has been putting out its position as far as the recent surge in the number of COVID-19 cases is concerned. We we'll would have that coming your way, but in other news, hundreds have been filing past the coughing of former President Rawlings, who has been laid in state at the Cranston National Conference Center ahead of his burial on Wednesday. I think that uh, the nation will remember him as someone who was so dearly loved, especially by the ordinary man who saw in him someone who really spoke for the ordinary person. Stay tuned in, we'll be back in a bit. Now, the Ghana Medical Association has called on government to, as a matter of urgency, restrict social activities, including church services, funerals and parties. The call comes on the back of a spiking COVID-19 cases across all 16 regions of the country. Deputy General Secretary of the Association, Dr. Titus Bayou, has been speaking with Gifty Anduapia on The Pulse. Um, things are not looking so good. And we have asked that, as you said, in the nine-point statement, uh, first emphasizing the fact that the situation is getting alarming. Mm -hmm. We are asking that we should, the government as a matter of agency, should uh, try and reimpose some restrictions on mass gatherings. Uh, we are also asking that the uh, people should be discouraged uh, from going publicly to join the uh, final funeral rites of our late uh, former president, uh, as many that can join um, online, uh, TV, social media handles, we think that should be encouraged. And very few people, it should be restricted to very few people instead of open up for everybody, as we call for a ban on other social gatherings. Uh, I think the critical thing I said was that our health systems are fragile. So we are starting from a health system that is not robust. And if you see very well established systems and what is happening to them, you can tell what COVID will do to our system. Hmm. Now, practically, as we speak now, our COVID centers are overstretched. And regular hospitals are beginning to have COVID patients in some of the emergency places. If you take the bigger hospitals in Accra, like Kolebu at the teaching hospital, our anesthetists are the main, uh, the anesthetists manning most of the COVID centers in the capital. What this means is that non-COVID cases will suffer. I am a surgeon, I'm a gynecologist. It means that some of my uh, non-urgent surgical cases will have to be canceled because the few anesthetists available are the same people who are going to man the various COVID centers across the country. Mm. And this is the kind of pressure that it brings onto the system. So currently there are people with COVID who need to be in hospital who are being managed at home. Mm because they are struggling to bed, get bare space. And if you take that away, the regular services that we deliver, when this burden is brought to bear on the system, then we are not able to render the uh, capacity that we would normally have delivered to the Ghanaian population. And this is the stretch that it can bring, or it has already brought to our healthcare system. And anytime we sounded the caution, people thought that the GMA was exaggerating or others thought we were being alarmist. But the truth is we know what we have as a people and not well on. So the the Ghana Health Service to go back to all the things we were doing before and we hope that this will be done to the spirit and to the letter so that Now, large numbers of Ghanaians have been filing past the coughing of former President Jerry Rawlings, who has been laid in state ahead of his funeral on Wednesday. 
Former Finance Minister in the Eswa Rawlings Administration, Professor Kwesi Boche, believes the principles of probity and accountability espoused by Jerry John Rawlings should now, more than ever, cause a reawakening of the nation. The longest serving finance minister is among several dignitaries who trooped into the Accra International Conference Center Monday. They have been speaking with Joy News editor, Ara Kumsi. I'm sure a lot of memories are going through your mind as you see the lifeless body of the former president lying there. What are some of those memories? Well, it is it's a very sad day for the nation. Um, JJ was such a huge figure in our whole political scene. And um, as I said in my tribute, you know, we, when a man attains such a huge stature, um, we get very used to it and imagine that um, somehow um, the laws of biology <laughs> wouldn't work with him. So, but it is sad that it happened and uh, happened so suddenly. I think that um, the nation will remember him as someone who was so dearly loved, especially by the ordinary man who saw in him someone who really spoke for the ordinary person and um, someone who provided leadership, very critical leadership at a time when the nation was almost literally on the brink of total social disintegration and provided leadership, especially in the area of economic policy transformation and uh, leadership in helping us take decisions that needed to be taken, even though they were painful and um, cost him some political, uh, um, you know, uh, some of his political uh, uh, liking. And, um, and so um, I do very much hope that the cardinal principles that he sued for, probity, accountability in public life especially, uh, will be taken seriously. These are all values that it would appear are being eroded with time, but I hope that this will provide a certain reawakening. Here lies uh, a very pleasant man who is gone. He had the uh, longest reign in this country, both as a military leader or a revolutionary leader, so, and then of course as a civilian ruler too. Thank in a greater percentage of some of us, our youthful light, he was the man who was at the, re at the reign of affairs in this country. So, I will say, if I want to be very gracious to the memory, say that it's had a big impact on the life of this country, political life in this country. Of course, uh, economic-wise, honestly, this country still remains what it used to be. Not much has changed. It means uh, we need to take a, a second look as political leadership of not only Ghana, but of a greater percentage of Africa. He managed, under his leadership, things changed in this country for the better. And it set this country on the path of good governance, of economic stability, of political stability. And what we have today is a credit to the leadership that he provided this country. And I walk in there and I see Jerry lifeless. It reminds you that everything has an end. Um, for a man who was so active, so buoyant, to see him in this state, I know that all of us at some point will, will go, but nobody fathomed that Jerry will go at this time. At least don't show elements of corruption around him. He is not God to know, look in your face and just know you are this or that. But working with him, you must be an honest person.
Watching your news prime, we're taking a break with your business. Hello there, welcome to business. I'm Charles Aite. There is a double test obligation for passengers traveling from Ghana to the Netherlands. The PCR test as well as the antigen test is what we're talking about. The rapid test must be taken no more than four hours before departure. This is in addition to the existing obligation to perform a PCR test seven to two hours before departure. I engaged the Managing Director for KLM Ghana, Dick Van Nguyenzen, on this developing story plus other issues at hand. Hours before boarding the aircraft, you have to do your antigen test, and that is now possible. Mm. We had uh, Sunday our first flight with the new rules and regulations, and we were able to carry on 160 passengers, and we only refused three passengers because of no COVID of no uh, no antigen test. So it is working, and we are back in business again. So so far, you have you know declined uh, three, rejected three passengers yeah. from Ghana. Yeah. Why? Because they did not take the antigen test. They didn't have the antigen but test. But how, how, how much does it cost to have this antigen test, uh, test at Akai? Because our figures tell us close to 850 Ghana cities for the test. At the airport it cost $150. Uh, Akai is charging at this moment less, but I know uh, there will be a meeting today between uh, the testing company at the airport and Akai clinic to find an, uh, a fair level of, uh, of testing price. So A50 was on the high side? Uh, at the airport they charge $150. Hmm. But help us understand, because there are also concerns that these, this second layer form yeah. of COVID testing yeah. could even place in much more pressure on the Ghanaian traveler out there. Is it something you're replicating just in Ghana or across other countries? No, the, well? the antigen testing for KLM flights only, not Air France, not the other airlines, but okay. it is only KLM, is applicable worldwide. The, I know there are a few exceptions. But in principle, it is applicable for all passengers boarding a KLM flight or going to Amsterdam or transited via Amsterdam will need the antigen test. It is not something which is specifically for Ghana, but it is for all passengers worldwide. I went through the health directory of uh, the Dutch government where yeah. you stated specific safe countries where yeah. you know issues regarding COVID-19 rigorous testing and whatnot will be determined based on the safety of these countries. Here in Ghana we're experiencing a second wave yeah. and we have even discovered a new variant to COVID-19, yeah. similar yeah. to that of South Africa. Correct. Is that going to be informing your next decision moving forward? Uh, Ghana is by the Dutch government. It has nothing to do with KLM. Eh? It is the Dutch government is deciding which country is safe, which country is not safe. Ghana is being considered as an, an, a not safe country. So for the antigen test and the COVID-19 test, the PCR test, both applies for passengers boarding a KLM aircraft in Ghana. Away from that, even as we mourn the death of Jerry Rawlings, one thing that stands has been his contribution to Ghana's economic uh, development. We do know that during his tenure, Jerry Rawlings initiated specific uh, economic rollouts of which we could have the Economic Recovery Program of 1983, which of course got the price right by devaluing the exchange rate, increasing real interest rates, also reducing the fiscal deficit sufficiently to eliminate the need for printing money. Also under this program, we realized it was to liberate the economy, including the foreign sector, by encouraging markets to function. This plus the VAT and other initiatives really helped Ghana spring up to the middle income category by the end of 2020 under his Vision 2020 initiative. So these and more remain outstanding economic uh, reforms under the Rawlings administration of which will be told by various economists moving forward. That's it by way of business. I'm back after eight. I'm Charles IT. And we've been dedicating the whole day towards the coverage of the final funeral rites for the late former President Jerry John Rawlins. And as you know, he's been laid in state at the Accra International Conference Center and forms part of the funeral activities lined up for the statesman who died in November. Now, the event gives the general public, along with some dignitaries, an opportunity to file past his body. But here, we want to recap some of his sporting moments just to begin the sports on Prime. Oh, and he's the right size, too. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't think I could have won this thing. <laughs> <laughs> only Papa J, may he rest in peace. Ghana's under-20 team, the Black Satellites, have been drawn alongside Tanzania, Gambia and Morocco in Group C of the 2021 Africa Under-20 Cup of Nations. The draw took place in Yaoundé, uh, Cameroon, earlier today and the tournament will be played between Valentine's Day and 4th of March. And here, the tournament's three groups, it's three groups, Group A, Mauritania, Cameroon, Uganda, and Mozambique. Group B, Burkina Faso, Tunisia, Namibia, and Central African Republic. Group C, the Black Satellites, Tanzania, Gambia, and Morocco. We'll be getting a reaction later from Abdul Karim Zito, the national team coach. Abroad, the big news that's been trending all day is that Israel lies Chelsea. Uh, Frank Lampard has been sacked by Israelis Chelsea after just 18 months as head coach and is likely to be replaced by Thomas Tuchel. There's more in this report. Tuchel, who left PSG in December last year and previously managed Borussia Dortmund, will be Chelsea's next head coach and plans are underway to appoint him before the game against Wolves on Wednesday. The German is the only candidate for the role. Lampard, who is the club's all-time leading goal scorer, enjoyed a good first season as the Blues boss, taking them to the FA Cup final and securing qualification for the Champions League. But after being given more than £200 million to spend on new players in the summer, Chelsea find themselves ninth in the Premier League after 19 games, 11 points behind leaders Manchester United and 5 points off Liverpool in fourth. Lampard to the side on a 17-game unbeaten run, but away defeats to Everton Wolves, Arsenal and Leicester and a 3-1 home defeat to Manchester City have cost him his job. Tuchel won the DFB Pokal in 2017 with Dortmund before a brief but trophy-laden spell in Paris which saw him win two League R titles and a French Cup as well as reaching the final of last season's Champions League which they lost to Bayern Munich. So that's it for the sport. Later, Hans Messander will be here to take you through what's latest in the trending stories, including the Ghana Premier League's latest. I'm Gary Al Smith. Thank you for your time. All right, it's time for Showbiz and Becky Bex. Yeah, hello, Bex. Hello to you. How are you? Fine, thank you. You had a great weekend. It was all right. You were dancing. <laughs> <laughs> you were trending all over. Yeah. But, but let's, let's, I mean, I'll talk about your dancing later on. Okay. But uh, Dumelo earlier uh, this afternoon was at the State House to pay uh, his last tribute to the, the conference center. Yeah, conference center. And um, he tells us what he will remember uh, former President J.J. Rollins for. Before we entered the foyer, I was looking at some of his pictures and I realized that, you know, indeed he was a great man. I mean, the pictures re echoed the fact that he was a man of the people, you know, helping farmers, helping the railway workers, helping people in general, people who are, for lack of a better expression, uh, down there. And so I realized he was really a great man. And, and Ghana has really lost a great person. Quickly, what were the memories uh, you have growing up of Mr. Rawlings? <laughs> well, I mean, we all, we all loved the fact that he would come to, you know, 
his military parade in his military dress and how stern he looked and how how charismatic he was and, and I think that is what people loved about him. I mean for lack of a better word, I think he was a no-nonsense man, and that's what uh, we need in Ghana, you know, in, in, in our Ghanaian leaders. Okay. Actor John Dumelo there. Let's yeah. move on and talk about another sad story, which actually came in this morning. Uh, actor Eddie Nate. Yes, yeah. I saw the story. I mean, I, I saw the post. On, post, on... yeah. Uh, just, you know, this morning. And he didn't really explain exactly what happened. Well, obviously, words cannot explain. I thought they were in Dubai or so for... Uh, the, the second anniversary. Okay. Yeah, they've been married for two years now. Oh, yeah. They celebrated it not too long ago. And we have uh, industry players uh, mourning with um, actor Eddie Nate. Such a very sad story to start January with. Uh, Izzy, we, we, wish, we wish him all the best. We... Yeah, but this yeah. is really sad. Very, really, very losing sad. a wife just for two years. Very sad. So that's 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 just about it. We wish him all the best. Yeah. Um, and over the weekend, whilst you were trending for <laughs> your dancing skills, <laughs> Cecilia Marfo. Cecilia Marfo. I saw. I saw. Do you know that. Cecilia Marfo? Cecilia Marfo, yeah. Cecilia. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, I'm not sure everybody else saw the video, but so what happened was uh, Joyce Blessing was ministering. It was a get-together. It, it was a Thanksgiving service in Kumasi. And, you know, the Holy Spirit, according to, you know, I can't speak for the Holy Spirit or anything. Okay. The Holy Spirit came over Cecilia Marfo, who happens to be a prophetess as well, and she went to snatch the microphone from uh, Joyce Blessing and she told Joyce to go back to her husband. Joyce didn't react, but uh, over the weekend on Sunday on This Is Gospel Show, uh, his manager spoke um, exclusively to uh, us and he's been saying that, well, they won't speak about it. They are yet to release uh, a statement about the incident. The moment. Yeah. Um, she's going through a lot. We, I can assure her fans that she's strong. Yeah. You know, she, she's a strong woman. Yeah. Yeah. So she's strong. Um, we are still believing in God. But at the right time, we will respond. At the moment, mm -hmm. we are not ready to respond to any um, question with regards to um, uh, that incident, honestly okay. speaking. So I quickly want to mm -hmm. draw that line. Wait, were you, as management, were you disappointed to see that on the in a general context, mm. I think that as professionals as we are, we've all been in this game for over decades. Mm. Um, if one artist is on the platform and is not done performing, mm. and another artist just jumps on, this jumps on it and take a microphone from the performing artist mm. on the stage, I think it is something that everybody should frown upon. Frown upon. Okay. We should all discourage that attitude. It's okay. not so professional. Okay. In a general context okay but i don't want to speak to the issue at the moment okay yeah is this something that you want to try in court i don't want to speak to the issue at the moment so it's very possible that uh joyce blessing and his management will take this to court and cecilia will have to come and explain how the holy spirit well, i mean it came across as very odd to me that yeah. that could happen or that should happen but well as you say social media has been reacting oh know? yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah, a lot cool. of people have been you yeah. know saying so many things but you know because it, it has to do i've been talking about how you know yeah you know, Cecilia Mafo callously snatched snatched it. you know I, I i and i don't know easy you can't really tell or you can't really comment because it has so she so Cecilia Mafo snatched but she she didn't bolt with no, the, no. With a microphone. She didn't do the Carlos ish ish. <laughs> we should interview Carlos one of these days. He's inspired a lot of people. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that's um, it's a very sad day. I mean, I really wanted to you know talk about your dancing skills, but how 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 did it go? How was your weekend? You met Shatawali. 
Yeah. And he you he asks you to train his yeah, yeah, yeah. dancers that's, for that's you. That's something we're having a conversation about. Okay. You know, so I mean, once we finalize things, I'll let you know. Okay, I'll be waiting. Yeah. In the meantime, I'm still hoping to train other people. I mean, shouldn't just be Shato Ali. You. I could train. You, open to train me. Other dancers. Or, yeah. Okay. I mean, if you, if you're again, if. if if you're interested, you can reach out to me. My head is spinning me. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Becky. Becky, for bringing us uh, showbiz. That will be for those of you watching on Joy Prime, but there's more news on the Joy News channel. Do stay tuned. In. Members of the University of Ghana branch of TEU are continuing their defiance of a directive from its mother association to halt its strike after a meeting with the Ministry of Employment and the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission. Some two weeks ago, TEU declared a strike over what they described as poor conditions of service and the refusal of government to pay its members 18% non-basic salary allowance as it is done for some senior members of universities. But the National Union called off the strike following the meet a meeting with representatives of government, but the branch of the union at the University of Ghana has refused to return to work. My colleague, Kweku Asante, has more in the following report. Defiance. More than a week after the national leadership of the Teachers and Educational Workers Union, Tewu directed its members to halt its strike action. Its branch in the University of Ghana is still striking. On the University of Ghana campus, members of Tewu have abandoned their work post, forcing students to take over some of their roles. According to Ken Bochi, local president of Tewu in the University of Ghana, until government heeds to their demand to pay them 18% of non-basic allowance, they are not going back to work. The government has unable to meet our expectation. What we are saying is, you've given our other counterparts 18%. Our other colleagues at the Ghana Education Service, 15% critical support. So why this 8%? The 8% basically means an insult to us, as if we don't deserve it or we are not human beings. Excuse my language. But we have Fair Wages and Salary Commission. So if you want to do everything, let that equity, fairness exist, then peace will prevail. We have stated that if government delays our security personnel, we are going to withdraw them. Yes. So if it delays, that is the next step or next line of actions that we are going to take. The government of Ghana has indicated its readiness to pay 8% of the 18% being demanded. But Ken Boche indicates that most of their colleagues in other universities agree that this is unacceptable. They, they received their communique from the Jubilee House. Uh, where they've stated 8%. Unfortunately, even with the general secretary, he was not pleased with the 8% that was given. He was not happy with the 8% that he was given. So why should we members be pleased with it? Now, at the meeting, the meeting involves all the public universities, all the 11 public universities. So we met, we closed yesterday around almost 10 to 11 p.m. And then we concluded that there's no way we can accept this 8%. Members of Tewu University of Ghana are still continuing its defiance of its mother association, Tewu National Directive, for them to return to their offices. At this meeting here today, which is still ongoing, the association, the union here at the University of Ghana campus, has been threatening that if government and this national association does not pay attention to the concerns they've raised, they're actually going to withdraw other essential services which they decided to not withdraw because of its importance, particularly relating to the security here at the University of Ghana campus. The strike of Tewu continued to bite, especially on the University of Ghana campus, whose members are still unwilling to go back to their work posts. Parents and the awards at the KNUST Basic School were Monday turned away as a strike by the Senior Staff Association of the University continued this week. This is because all teachers at the basic school are members of the association who deserted the school on Monday. Well, parents and students who spoke with Love News were disappointed. Prince Apia monitored the situation in our report. This is the assembly grounds for the KNUST basic school. Ordinarily, this place at this time will be full of students ready to get into their classrooms to learn. But today, 
that is the challenge most of the members of the association are teachers of this basic school and today none of them turn up because of their strike sharifa mohammed is a mother of two she had brought her children to school but to a disappointment um, um i want to learn but it's so disappointed to to be at home Yes, but I wanted the, all of them to come because they are all of my friends. Very, very disappointed because um, just they, they just came last week. I think it's last week that they just resumed years. So waking up to the news of this strike is very, very disappointing because I wasn't expecting it. Honestly, we didn't see it coming. So we are just pleading on the government to see to it that their conditions of service are met. Today, she would have to go back home with the two and find an alternative to keep them busy until the strike is called off. So it's either we take them to their grandmother's place or we find a new way. We've been homeschooling since, yes, their dad and I just homeschooling, so we just continue. We spoke to some parents who also got knowledge of the strike this morning. Uh, I received it this morning from a lady who works at the printing press. She's also a senior staff. In fact, I told her I was coming down here to pay my grandson's fees. She told me uh, the senior staff have also joined the junior staff on strike. That there was nobody moving those the school children who, who have come, they have all been sucked to go home. Uh, I think it's bad. No, no, having sat home for more than 10 months and see how if we can engage uh, you no know, home teachers for the meantime. The senior staff association are embarking on this strike because of their working conditions they are not happy about, which includes their non-basic allowance and pension allowances. Some of us, are, our children are part. But let me tell you, we, it's not because of the students that we are embarking on the strike. We started our strike while the students were at home. And what we are saying is that we are not happy to go on strike. We all have feelings for the students, but we are also not satisfied with the way government is treating us. So we are pleading with the government to, as a matter of urgency, address our concerns so that we come back to work. Unless we, we, we have something in our hand or we have a roadmap that we all agree on, uh, we are not coming back. Authorities say they will continue with the strike until government pay heed to their demands. My name is Prince Apia reporting from KNUSD Primary School. Hundreds of supporters of the New Patriotic Party defied a police order to embark on a peaceful demonstration to protest the nomination of Dr. Archibald Lecha to serve as Volta Regional Minister for another term. The demonstration organized by the Volta MPP Grassroots for Justice was to drum home their disapproval of Dr. Lecha's nomination because they say he failed to protect the interests of the party during his first January. The convener of the group, Kinsley Hosu, explained the continuous stay of Dr. Lecha in the office of the regional minister will be detrimental for the governing party, hence their plea for reappointment. Also, regional correspondent Fred Kwame Asari has more. Before the nomination of Dr. Achibod Lecha as the Volta Regional Minister designate, Volta NPP Grassroots for Justice served notice to stage a demonstration against his nomination. On the eve of the demonstration day, the Volta Regional Police Command issued a press release cautioning the group not to embark on the demonstration. The press release states that due to the upsurge of COVID-19, such an event will endanger public health and safety. However, the pro-NPP group defied the police order and embarked on the intended demonstration, while the police provided security and directed traffic. The demonstration which took off at the Metro Mass Transit Terminal in Soko de Lokwe went through the principal streets of Ho amidst drumming and singing. They ended at the premises of the Volta Regional Secretariat of the NPP, 
where they presented a petition to the Volta Regional NPP Chairman, Makafi Iwanya. The convener of the Volta NPP Grassroots for Justice, Kinsley Hosu, indicated that Dr. Lecha during his first tenure as Volta Regional Minister failed to serve in the interest of the party. We wish to reiterate that our protest against the reappointment of Dr. Achibar Yaolecha as we wish to as a person is not the issue in contention as he, he more than qualifies for the position where his impeccable academic and professional credentials. What we have said over and again is that the father Dr. Lecha has caused more harm than good yes. as the regional minister in President Nana. First tenure. It's true. He also accused the minister of failing to contribute to the governing party's campaign activities in the 2020 election year. Ample evidence available to us proved that materials and logistics like tricycle, sewing machines, hair dryers, etc., meant for campaign, have found their way into Dr. Lecha's shopping mall and hotels. While constituencies were looking for logistics to campaign with, to maximize their votes, we have some self-seeking individuals like Dr. Dr. Lecha hiding the items at his residence for personal adjustments. Is this the party we want to build for the youngest? No! Ladies and gentlemen, these are many other others we think are the very reasons why we the voter and the grassroots for justice want to bring to the attention of the president through our good office so that you appoint person to lead us in a difficult region as a voter region. You take key factors into consideration with the grassroots being your primary source of information before you give out appointment positions to persons who can make and make your pair actions Mr. Wanya, upon receiving the petition, promised to forward it to the appropriate quarters for consideration. Can the original party, and on my own behalf, uh, I receive your petition and forward same to His Excellency, the President of the Republic, and the national leadership of the party. Thank you very much. Uh, I want people to remain calm. The issue is being deliberated upon. Thank you. Petition promised to forward it to the appropriate quarters for consideration. The demonstrators, however, indicated that they would continue to demonstrate until Dr. Lecher is replaced. Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News. Who? We're taking a break here on Joy News, Prime. We have more business coming up. Do stay tuned in. Hello, good evening. It's time for business. Businesses and consumers will soon be compelled to sign on to new insurance products as the National Insurance Commission soon introduces a basket of compulsory insurance products. There is more in this report. Well, there are new provisions in the Act and um, they affect regulated entities and other parties and you need to set um, effective dates for implementation of, of those provisions. So those are the transitional arrangements that need to be made for the implementation of the bill. With regards to the bill and with what you presented to Parliament and subsequently to the President, were there any additions or uh, uh, deductions from what you presented? Well, we, we are yet to see the final product that was passed by Parliament. You know, at the final stages, it's taken over by Parliament and they pass it and send it to the President. We are yet to see the very final product that, that came out. We haven't seen it yet, so um, I may not be able to comment at this time. But we don't expect any major differences between what we submitted and what has been passed. Okay. So refresh our minds once again on some of the compulsory insurances you seek to implement going forward. Well, I think the compulsory insurance on commercial fire, um, commercial properties, which is already there. Some of the new ones are professional indemnity um, for certain professions and occupations and um, uh, public liability for certain places and, and certain trades and, and occupations. 
Well, away from that, the new president of the CIIG, Tiria Ben Ahmed, says the institute will draw some lessons from the banking sector cleanup to ensure that its members are not found culpable during the issuance of the insurance sector's recapitalization. Thank you very much. We give our two-year strategy defend and grow name, and, and the reason is simple. Um, if you look at what has happened in the not too distant future, past, uh, you realize that the the banking sector suffered a bit of setback, where a number of banks had to lose their license, a number of banks in the banking sector had to go down, um, following an action of the Bank of Ghana. If you study closely the conversations around what happened there. Uh, Corporate governance, risk management, control environment emerged as some of the strong uh, issues that emerged from there. Now, defend and grow the chartered insurances of Ghana is saying that the defend bucket is saying ensure governance excellence, ensure the constitution supporting the chartered insurances of Ghana is fit for purpose in the changing times in which we are and then ensure that your cash flow and investments are managed by a proper investment policy. So, governance excellence will defend the chartered insurance system of Ghana, and we want to establish a, a governance excellence reference point for members. We are learning from what is happening in the banking sector, so that we, we, we set up and improve our governance excellence as a professional body, so that our members can learn from it and do better. Because trust me, insurance, is a specialized type of service. The trust of insurance is, is, is largely dependent on the quality of your governance excellence behind the business. Because you're giving, in essence, insurance is a promise to pay valid claims delightfully and a commitment to provide quality and reliable solutions and services. So if you promise to pay valid claims under a contract you have issued, trust, confidence, integrity of the business, cannot be over, uh, uh, overemphasized. And that is what we are talking about as in governance excellence under the defend bucket of the defend and grow strategy. Well, the GRA is developing a device to enable property owners to pay their property rates without any challenge. This is part of efforts by the authority to mobilize more revenue from domestic sources. The Commissioner General of the GRA, Amisha Dai Owusu Amwa, believes that this will help the country henceforth. There is more in this report. After declaring a 60 billion CD target for the year, the Ghana Revenue Authority believes the use of technology will be a game changer in meeting the revenue target. The Commissioner explains. Up for uh, property rates, and we mentioned that that same app, uh, we're also going to use it for uh, rent tax. The app is such that it's a software that actually identifies all the properties in the municipality actually categorize the property into owner occupied and uh, rented. And you can actually zoom in on the properties and see who owns it and whether. And so the software has been done and currently is being used by the, uh, MM, uh, the municipal assemblies. That's the same one we are going to use for the rent tax. And therefore that will also be rolled out fully uh, this year. Other initiatives by the authority includes the replacement of the tax identification number to the Ghana card, a collaborative effort with the National Identification Authority. Come the, by March, we will be replacing the, as for the individuals, the tin will be the same as your Ghana card. And that'll be all for business. I'm Charles Aite. For the bulletin for this evening, my name is Israel Lai. Thank you very much for watching. You have a good night.